DeRosa back with you, and I have joined the Paddock Prince in Oldham County. We're both at our humble abodes and not so humble. I'm going to brag on you, Prince. Uh, you're beating the meat at Keeneland. Uh, really good weekend for you and your team. I know it's uh, uh, a duet at times uh, over at uh, the, the, the Royal Castle, but uh, congratulations. That was a big weekend. Yeah, no, it's been a really good, um, after the first day, it's been really good at Keeneland. Um, yeah, I'd be remiss to mention Jason Perry, who helped um, helps me do my sheet sometimes because, you know, doing two tracks, sometimes you need a little breather. So Jason had a really good Friday last week. But yeah, overall, for the meet, it's been really good. I've had a couple good pick fives, but like at Churchill, I had a bad last couple of days. So I got to I gotta keep nine days left, eight days left? Eight? Uh, nine. Nine. Do they run on the following Saturday or just the following Friday? Yeah, it's not. So in the spring, they don't run that Saturday. That's opening yeah. night at Churchill. But in the fall, they run through Saturday and then stars with tomorrow on Sunday. But uh, it's yeah. a perfect segue because we have a new product or not product, but a new offer. It's scrolling at the bottom. Uh, you can commit now and get not only the rest of Keeneland and Breeders' Cup, but also opening week at Churchill and uh, now's the time to strike because you got the momentum going. And the question for you is, is it true that you're only doing so well because Todd Pletcher is absolutely crushing this meet? It's not true because, funny enough, I didn't pick either Pletcher's on Sunday, Julia Shining or the oh. uh, Juniper Marshmallow horse, whatever the horse's name was in the last race. I used them both, but oddly, I, I didn't pick either. I picked the um, – I actually – I picked the one, the two that lost by a nose. So that's how it went for me with that's how it went for me with Pletcher on Sunday. But he has had a really good meet. I mean, I, I read an article yesterday. He had three grade ones. Chad Brown had two. And then um, Mark Cassie won the Alcibiades, was the only other trainer with a grade one. So, you know, he's I think he's 41% right now. I saw also he's been very live at the meet, and he looks pretty live this um, week as well. Yeah, no surprise. Uh, we, we do have a graphic, which uh, we'll see after uh, post-production as it in. Uh, Sarah Albadwi handling those duties. Thank you to her. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, Pletcher extremely uh, just having a fantastic meet. Steve Asmussen, second based on HRN Impact, and he's uh, had some well-documented woes uh, at the Keeneland Fall Meet. Not sure if he purposely recalibrated, but uh, it's certainly some different looking stock than we're used to seeing for him. Even last year, David, when he was oh for for that long period of time and he finally got the win later in the year, it, it just seemed like he was coming with, with different horses than you would normally see from him at Saratoga, Churchill Fall. Uh, maybe that's not the case this year. Maybe a more balanced barn. Yeah, last year he had that huge Saratoga meet. I think he had six or seven grade ones, and then at Keeneland he didn't do a thing. But this year at Keeneland he had debuted extra in Yeho, so he's had some – he won the turf sprint for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint, the win and you're in at Keeneland. The name's escaping me, but, yeah, like I said, extra in Yeho. He usually doesn't – I don't know if he cranks him up at Keeneland, you feel like, but he ran that big-time firster who I'm sure will be prepping for the um, jockey um, race at um, Churchill at the end of November. Yeah, Jackie Club, and uh, he has the, the, the fairgrounds contingent too, so a uh, good problem to have where to spread them out. Jockey-wise, uh, nothing too surprising at top. I mean, at Joe Talamo may be a name we're not used to seeing, but uh, he's up there based on HR and Impact. I was somewhat, I want to say surprised, because it's not like Leperu and Morales are perennially at the top, but they had fantastic late summer, early fall. Uh, Edgar, in particular, between Horseshoe, Indianapolis, and Churchill, uh, was on fire. They have since cooled off uh, at Keeneland, and uh, you know Leperu's my man, but there were there were definitely some some questionable situations this past weekend. Yeah, especially at Keeneland, because Churchill, you don't get the New York guys shipping in. So at Keeneland in the fall, me especially the first two weeks, you see all the big guys come in, and it takes away – from some of the, you know, Kentucky only riders. And then Morales, on the other hand, he wins a lot for Tom Amos. And I don't I don't know how many horses Tom Amos has ran at Keeneland, but I feel like yeah, he runs a ton of horses. Yeah, he runs a ton of horses in the Churchill Spring and then in the fall meet a lot of two year olds. And I'm sure he'll get Morales and Julian will get back going in November when they get back to Churchill when I think Saez is the only New York guy staying for the um, Churchill meet this year. So I'm sure those guys will pick up some more steam once they're all the big boys leave. 
Right. Well, the, uh, the the big names certainly won't be uh, on their way out the first weekend in November. That is the Breeders' Cup. And uh, obviously hoping your momentum continues. Then you pick winners over the next two weeks, have a big Breeders' Cup. As far as horsemen go or trends on the track, do you think there's anything to what we've seen the first couple of weeks at Keeneland could be indicative of what the, the Breeders' Cup is? To me, there's still a lifetime between now and Breeders' Cup, so I'm not as concerned. Obviously hoping you keep it up, though. Yeah, I don't track trends-wise. I think the track has been fair. The mile and a 16th race has been speed. If it's a you know seven for a long race, like you saw Julia Shining close the other day, I know that was a, a better performance for a maiden than you usually see. I didn't get a huge figure, but you know you don't usually see maidens make moves like that. But track-wise, I think it's been pretty fair. There hasn't been any like extreme inside biases um two years the covid year when they had breeders cup with two years ago um you saw the track i felt like it was super speed nick's go was super fast um nashville ran a huge um speed figure on that track um authentic wired the race so you know i like you said i think it could change a little by the time breeders cup comes around but right now i think it's been pretty fair and i'm not really looking ahead to breeders cup at the moment in terms of how the track will be playing have to see how it does on those early races friday but hopefully it's fair because nobody wants a speed favoring inside dirt track where horses are just running in circles and merry-go-round races no uh absolutely not and uh so next week we'll have the pre-entries they come out on friday we'll know a lot more about what euros are actually expected to show up, things of that nature. I'm doing a video shortly with Sarah, uh, just kind of international racing in particular, but I'll ask you uh, the same question. How do you, what's your approach for handicapping the international shippers? Um, I think it's tough. I think you have to go by the human connections first. Like obviously Appleby the last couple of years has been huge in American racing. So anytime you see an Appleby horse, I think he's sending six of them. So you have to take real notice with Appleby and then like Aiden O'Brien, who's had a lot of Breeders' Cup starters, he doesn't have great success in America. So you kind of have to pay attention to go back and watch the replays and see what quality of horses he's sending. If he's sending a C string, I mean, I know he won the mile at Keeneland a couple years ago, but the horse was like 101 order of yeah. Australia. Australia. So I think you just have to, I think you just got to pay attention to what trainers are coming, what, what level horses they're bringing. And then, you know, you watch replays and try to do as much research on, um, you know, I think racing post is a website that you can look up a lot of info. Obviously yep. horse racing nation will have some stuff for it as well. Um, just watch replays and try to get the best, um, info you can get on. Cause it's tough. It's obviously, you know, and the speed, you know, you don't see me euros come over with speed. So you just gotta really do your research. All right. Uh, well, I agree. And now I am not a big replay watcher, which is why Horse Racing Nation has hired someone to watch the replays. Uh, we'll have more on that next week. Uh, but Doug Salvatore, uh, who did a lot of derby work uh, for us with the uh, the prep races, is going to take a look uh, at some replays. So very eager to see what he has to say about the international shippers, as we will. What you have to say, uh, any uh, last thoughts on uh the run up to Breeders' Cup and last half of the Keeneland meet? No, Brian Hernandez has nine days to get his ROI positive. <laughs> you forgot to mention that in the jockey report. He did have a couple wins last week, though. Yeah, yeah uh, it was life and death at three to two, but uh, that every little bit helps for sure. Uh, he's actually won more on turf, which was part of the bet. Uh, the, the question was, oh, he has all these better numbers on turf at Keeneland. And my thought was the reason I made the bet is if you look at him overall as a jockey, he's actually much better on dirt than turf. At Keeneland, for whatever reason, that's been flipped. So I just kind of thought, well, he'll go back to the larger sample size and get a nice one at dirt. I'm confident that McPeak's going to sneak one in here at 20 to 1 and Brian's going to be aboard. That's He is. That's like, the hope. McPe McPeak doesn't win at 3 to 2 very often. It's more 32 <laughs> to 1. So all you need, all you need is one. All right. Well, I, and I needed to come on. Yeah, dirt. no, that's can't, um, can't be a turf steamer. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, well, they don't run dirt turf races at Churchill very often, so I'm sure that's why his mm -hmm. um, stats are a lot different at Keeneland on the because they run turf right. races at Keeneland, obviously. But you know, leading up to Breeders' Cup, I think. I mean, if, like you said, the pre-entries come out, so we'll see more of the fields. I don't think there's going to be many late additions that we don't know about. Obviously, you see what yeah. euros are coming for the most part. So. We'll get a better gauge next week.
All right, looking forward to that. Looking forward to you keeping the momentum going this week and looking forward to everyone availing themselves to that. Great offer below. Uh, if uh, that website's too much to catch while it scrolls, just go to picks.horseracingnation.com. You'll find it. He's the Paddock Prince. I'm Ed DeRosa. Best of luck this week. Good luck to you as well.